Hi, fellow YouTubers. Welcome to another edition of DNA's podcast. And as always, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button after this video or even before. Today's hot topic is Does a woman's body count matter? Stay tuned as we take a deeper dive into this right after the break. Welcome back. Without further ado, let's get into today's hot topic. Does a woman's body count matter? So, the straightforward answer to this without minting words is yes, yes, yes. A woman's body count does matter so far as sustainable, meaningful, and valuable relationships with men are concerned. To look at this in more forensic details, let's take a step back in time before the sexual revolution period or before the existence of DNA testing and birth control. From an evolutionary and reproductive standpoint, it made perfect sense for a woman to have a very low body count and to be selective and protective of the man they were with as the possibility of pregnancy exists and more so to ensure paternity. On the other hand, the concept of paternity has been a long-standing imperative for men as they took serious interest in this to make certain they fathered and put resources into a child that was theirs. In ancient times, it was very difficult to determine paternity for highly promiscuous women and the consequences were far-reaching. This brought physical, psychological, emotional and reputational repercussions which were usually irreversible to the woman, her family and community. Higher body counts for women back then came with higher biological risks for contracting diseases along with higher probabilities of transmission. This including the stigma, devalued, debased and disqualified women from being potential wives. It is also worth noting that men on the other hand got a lot of respect from their peers and community if the woman they were with had not been with other men. For these compelling reasons and more, it was very important for a woman to stay disciplined with her body and body count. Now, let's fast track this to present day. Modern day women and feminists have muddied the waters up by taking a lax approach to this. We now live in an era where women have been sexually liberated to the extent that they have significantly higher body counts than the average Joe. Interesting enough, the body counts of men in general keep going down whilst that of women are hitting alarming numbers. Partly because a significant number of men don't get that much physical intimacy as most are invisible to modern day women. Most of today's women are targeting the top 20% of men. In other words, the top tier men are in firm control of the sexual market and with their quote and unquote abundance mindset. These men instinctively exercise their options in ways they deem fit and appropriate. In one of my videos, I cover who these top tier men are in the form of high value men. We're checking this out guys. I also touch on an issue of how modern women use the behaviors of these top tier men to make inaccurate generalizations about all men on matters pertaining to male infidelity when they, modern women, overlook a vast majority of men outside this bracket as potential partners. <laughs> modern women are overlooking about 80% of men and the imbalance in the numbers has given rise to more men virgins and men with incredibly low body counts than ever before. 
What modern day women need to understand is that a man with a body count of say a hundred is not the same as a woman with a body count of a hundred. It is generally harder for guys to get intimacy in this era. As such, a man with a higher body count means he has a lot of qualities that women desire. If a woman has a high body count, it shows she has poor decision-making skills, very little discipline and self-worth. As sex is one of the easiest things for a woman to acquire. This is why they say a key that opens many locks is a master key. And a lock that opens to many keys is a crappy lock. If a woman has the character and personality that brought about a high body count, it becomes progressively harder for her to successfully pair bond in the future and to settle down as she continuously compares the man she is with to an ever increasing pool of sexual partners. Modern women subconsciously know they are judged by their body count, so it does matter and if it didn't, then the million dollar question is why are many women lying about it or insisting on keeping it a secret? It is more often the case that any woman who normally says body count doesn't matter and it is just a number is usually a culprit. In other words, any woman that is trying to defend a high body count is very likely to have a high body count as they desperately try to convince men that it is not a big deal, but it is a big deal as it matters to men in general. Any woman who complains about men's preferences is most likely not meeting those preferences. Men as quote and unquote consumers are biologically predispositioned to be attracted to youth, beauty, and purity. As such, the high demand for purity in females by men automatically puts the value of a woman with very low to zero body count in pole position. <laughs> Guys, there are reasons why virginity and a woman's purity has always been highly priced and sought after across cultures, across religion, and across millennia. This is not rocket science, unless modern day women want to rewrite history and re-engineer or rewire the biology of men to think and act differently. Men generally, by virtue of their genetics, are hardwired from the factory to value virgins and women with very low body counts at minimum because of the low risk, high benefits, and the far-reaching advantages they come with. Men generally see these women as a representation and a reflection of themselves with a high likelihood of the woman getting on their program or following their lead. She's also likely to be transparent, not play games, and to be on the man's side through thick and thin as opposed to being flaky. These are some of the advantages and benefits to a man. Another reason why a woman's body count should stay low is because on the balance of probability, a woman who has slept with five men versus a woman who has slept with a hundred men, the latter is more likely to have more unresolved trauma from her past. She's also likely to experience higher incidents of infidelity marital dissatisfaction, divorce, and high maintenance propensities. High maintenance, in this case, is not necessarily referring to money, but rather the amount of patience, time, and effort, i.e. levels that go above and beyond what is required in an average healthy relationship. There are facts and figures out there backing this. And giving it more weight. Men have always generally found virgin women more valuable than non-virgin women. End of. It is a free world 
and modern women are free to make any decisions or choices, but should be aware that any poor choices or decisions come with ramifications that are usually irreversible. Modern women should not expect to be bailed out with traditional outcomes for their poor choices, ill decisions, zero accountability, lack of responsibility, and the deliberate ploy to overlook what men value. We now live in a world where the very things that are important and matter to most men are relegated to the background. So, men have chosen to work in silence and keep to themselves by generally not committing to relationships or finding any value in getting married. If women are generally the ones that look for security and stability in relationships through engagements and marriages, then would it not make more sense for modern women to figure out what men generally want so they can attract that? Moreover, the choice of whether a woman is worthy to be married or not is usually the man's call. And the more promiscuous a woman is, the harder it becomes for her to find a partner for marriage, as men are biologically repulsed by this. As they say, women control access to sex, and men control access to relationships and marriages. As such, any woman who exercises discipline with her body and body count, along with the right behaviours, is definitely setting herself up for success from a long-term relationship and marital standpoint, as this core attribute is highly valued and priced amongst men. I'll draw the curtains here guys on this subject. Thanks for watching and if you found this video informative and riveting, please socialize it and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and leave your comments below. See you all in my next video. Bye for now, stay safe and protect yourselves at all times. Long live the manosphere. Peace out.